Good morning, friends. Good morning. A special welcome to guests and visitors. I know you are, are many. Most of our service you'll need to follow along on the screen. Our opening hymn is a case in point. Our choir will sing some of the verses and you will respond. Lord's blessings on your worship. Steadfast in 
please stand. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. At the outset of our Reformation Festival worship, we humbly confess how dearly we value our Savior God's full and free forgiveness. We lay our own struggle with sin before his throne, using the words of one of Luther's hymns based on Psalm 130 and recast in today's English. In hopelessness and near despair, I cry to you, my Savior. My guilt is more than I can bear. I have not earned your favor. You know me as I really am. How much is truth? How much is sham? Why should you heed my pleading? I see my heart's condition now, my heart's diverse affections. Why do I love the things you loathe? I'm torn in two directions. Now prodigal, now Pharisee, O oh God, be merciful to me. Who else but you can help me? I tremble as I feel your hand, expecting retribution. Yet hear no curse or reprimand, but grace and absolution. With you there is forgiveness, Lord. You speak the sweet, consoling word, and I am sure you love me. Forgiven, free of guilt and shame, Lord, grant us time to render, a gift to glorify your name, love to reflect your splendor. This world must know what we have learned that you bestow what none has earned, the joy of full forgiveness. Be of good cheer. Your Savior has carried all your sins to the cross. In the place of our Savior as a called and ordained servant of his word, I joyfully forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Worship and live now in grateful thanks. Put away whatever counters your deliverer's saving love for you, that you may enjoy his blessings and the heavenly salvation you await. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies and bestow on us, your church, your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We'll read the following selections, first from Galatians, then from Matthew's Gospel. Forgiveness is always full and free, no strings attached. For the Old Testament Christian, the rite of circumcision threatened the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ when it was insisted on. We read from Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. To stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised, 
that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. This is our first lesson. It's alright. 
Alleluia. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Alleluia. The gospel lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 10. We'll start in verse 16. Please stand. Matthew 10, verse 16 and following, Jesus said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You'll be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. On my account, you'll be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you'll be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father is child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. Truly I tell you, you will not finish going through the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. This is the gospel lesson. We'll join in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as the junior choir sings, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
You may remain seated for one of the Old Testament lessons for this Reformation Sunday is taken from Daniel chapter 6. We'll read select verses from 10 to 12 and then 16 and following. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, should be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be repealed. Verse 16. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him and he could not sleep. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. We pray. O oh, Holy Spirit, give us this kind of courage that is based in Jesus and Jesus alone. Amen. In the name of our Savior, who is the one man standing for each one of us, dear friends. Well, maybe by now some of you are tired of hearing about Reformation 500 and the fact that this is the 500th anniversary of the Lutheran Reformation. Others of you may not even know what it's about. And you're saying, hey, I could listen to A Mighty Fortress is Our God all day long. Well, the Lutheran Reformation occupies a very important place in human history. Some refer to it geographically and simply call it the German Reformation. Others refer to it chronologically and call it the 16th century Reformation. And those who want to talk down or oppose the Reformation might just simply call it a Reformation or a revolution of some kind. But USA Today and World Report ranks the Lutheran Reformation as second in importance in the last 1,000 years. The only thing that nudges it out of first place 
is the invention of the movable type printing press, which God used to promote the rediscovery of the gospel message. So it's printing press first, Lutheran Reformation, and then number three is discovery of the new world. So how about that? The Lutheran Reformation even edges out discovery of the new world. And Martin Luther himself, he is listed in that same report as number three on the list of most important people in the last 1,000 years. And don't ask me who numbers one and two are, I don't know. Number three is pretty high. So the case for the Lutheran Reformation, at least in history's mind, is way up there. And yet we will this morning once again realize that the spotlight doesn't really fall on Daniel, does not fall on Martin Luther, it really sheds light on Jesus Christ. He is the one man standing for you and in you. That's very easy for us to say, oh, he's the one man standing. But what does it mean? What does your faith in Jesus Christ mean for you? Let's talk about that. Jesus was born way after Daniel. Daniel was looking into the future. Daniel knew that his confidence was in a savior to come. Daniel knew that the biggest and best of God's promises was wrapped up in Jesus Christ and that he would be a descendant from his family. He knew that. He knew there was someone on the other side of his prayers. So he was confident. He was confident that Jesus was for him. Not the number four, but F-O-R, for him. He knew that. Friends, this is the main gift of the Lutheran Reformation, that Jesus Christ is for you and me. I'll read a verse here. It's very familiar to you, to many of you. It's from the book of Romans. It says, by the obedience of one man, many were made righteous. Well, who's the one man? It's none of us here. It wasn't Daniel, it wasn't Martin Luther, it was Jesus Christ. By his obedience, by his perfection, we're made righteous. Here's another verse out of Romans. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So righteousness has come your way. It is applied to you right now through Jesus. You don't have to wait to die. You don't have to hope that, oh, somehow it's going to be true. You have Christ's righteousness and his holiness right now. This is most certainly true. For how many weeks haven't you been looking at the Reformation banner? It's got the big J word at the top. Justified. And a way to remember that is God treats me just as if I had never sinned. It's actually a courtroom term. It means that the God of the universe says to those who know Jesus, and really to every human being, you are just in the eyes of God. And then those little Latin phrases around the rose that we have been saved by grace alone, faith alone, through scriptures alone, they're all linked together. God's grace in Christ comes to us by grace, is revealed to us in the scriptures. That is the heart of what you have inherited. And it's what we are tempted to oftentimes take for granted. There's a statue of Martin Luther that stands at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary and on each of the sides on the base, 
And this is way more important than him. And you'd be the first to say that, by the way. It's got this quote. Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness. I am your sin. You became what you were not and made me to be what I was not. I'll say that again. Lord Jesus, you are my righteousness. I am your sin. You became what you were not and made me to be what I was not. See, it's the trade. It's the switch. Jesus, who is absolutely righteous and perfect, became sin for us and gave to you and me his righteousness. That's Jesus for you. Everyone of you that will take communion this morning, you're going to hear those words again. Given and poured out for you. It's, it's a personal application of what Christ has done for you. He is the one man standing on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, and he's for you. Well, Jesus isn't done yet. He's also in you and in me, in all of us who know him. Where in the world would Daniel find the gumption to look at King Darius and go about his daily devotional life? Where would he find the courage to do that? Was it simply because Darius liked capable people around him and Daniel was very capable and Darius liked him and liked having capable people around him, but that's not where Daniel got his courage. Where would Martin Luther find the courage to later on stand before ecclesiastical and imperial powers and say what he said? Why would he do that? Where do he find the courage? Because he's a genius? Because he's a theologian? Because he's a best-selling author and has written more best-selling books than we probably will in the course of our lifetime? Well, he was all of those. He's a theologian, he's a genius, he wrote lots of books. That's not where he found his courage. He found his courage in Jesus Christ, who was in him. Listen to this. This is in Daniel chapter 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. He knew the edict. He knew what was waiting for him. He did it anyway. This next verse I'm going to read to you is not in the Bible. In fact, historians aren't even really, really sure Martin Luther ever said this. But whether he said it or not, the Reformation that he began is very real. He was given a night to think about all the books that he had written and all the stuff that he had said. And here's what he said. Unless you can prove from the Bible that I made wrong statements, I cannot and I will not take back anything. My conscience is bound by the word of God. Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Amen. So how could two people say that? Well, Daniel found his courage in a Savior yet to be born. Martin Luther found his courage in a Savior that had been born and had rediscovered the gospel message. Christ was in them. He's in you. You will probably not be put on trial before presidents, dictators, or other governmental authorities because of something that you have written. But you will, you are, you have already experienced the ire and the venom of people that don't like the fact that you represent Jesus Christ. You will probably never be thrown in a lion's den. But you may have lost friends already because of your, quote, moral integrity. You may have lost friends. You may lose opportunities to advance yourselves in your work because you stand with Jesus 
and not what everybody else is doing. That you have on your lips words that build up and don't tear down. Did you listen carefully to the gospel lesson this morning? Jesus said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Stop. Who does that? Sends his followers out like sheep among wolves. Jesus does that. Why? He's in here. Therefore, be as shrewd as snakes and as innocent as doves. Be on your guard. You will, not, you will be handed over to the local councils and be flogged in the synagogues. That's not even a question. On my account, you will be brought before governors and kings as witnesses to them and to the Gentiles. But when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say. For it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. What a great promise that is from God to us. He is for us and he is in us. So many will be getting in on the act, celebrating the Reformation. What about beyond 2017? What about when this year is over? Our day is very different. You might wish that we could turn back the hands of time, like you turned back your clock one hour last night. Oh, back in the day. Well, it's not back in the day. And it's not your parents' and your grandparents' day. This is your day. And it's Jesus Christ for you, always for you, and in you. He's the one standing. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Notice in your bulletin a little explanation of the common chest. Please read that if you wish to participate. You can do that throughout the coming week or weeks. At this time, we'll gather the thank offering and make use of the friendship register in each bench.
At this time, we'll receive into our fellowship two families. We ask for them to both come forward, the family, the Hermanson family, as well as the Place family. Their names are printed for you in your bulletin. Andrew and Jennifer Hermanson, their children, Mallory, Brett, and Asher. Kevin and Melissa Place, and their children, Gavin and Layla. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus promises to confess before his Father in heaven those who faithfully confess him on this earth. And you have come before this congregation to declare your faith and to unite with us in Christian love and fellowship. Therefore, lift up your hearts to the God of all grace and give answer to these questions. Do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, then answer, I do. And do you believe that the Holy Scriptures are the inspired Word of God, that Jesus is at the heart of those Scriptures? If so, then declare by saying, I do. And do you intend to continue steadfast in the true Christian faith and be diligent in the use of God's Word and sacraments and lead a godly life even to death? If so, then answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. And will you support with your prayers, time, talents, and offerings the work our Lord has given to this congregation? If so, then answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Having heard your promises, we, the members of St. Paul's Evangelical Lutheran Church, receive you in fellowship and love and invite you to share in our worship and mission in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. In mercy, you have joined these brothers and sisters in Christ to your church, born again of water and the Spirit. In mercy, you have taught them. Help them to grow, help all of us to grow in our relationship with you. Amen. Please turn out to the prayer list on your card. We'll add to that that Gary Baumgarten is undergoing outpatient surgery tomorrow morning. And some of you know this already that Pastor Crushell had the call to serve at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Holman. He has accepted that call installation date we're not sure of yet. We'll let you know. We'll pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you for the spiritual growth of both families that we just witnessed and for all of our growth. Help us to recognize on this Reformation Sunday that the truth of the Reformation transcends a day or a year. It's what we are about our entire lives. You are for us and you are in us. We pray for all those in ill health, Andy Kick, who is recovering his strength in the hospital yet. 
My father, Paul, who is losing his strength, is ready for heaven. We add to that Gary Baumgarten and many others who need your prayers, who need our prayers to you, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you for recovery that you have granted to Lyle Witt, Susan's father. We thank and praise you for the blessings that you have granted for 41 years to our staff minister, Dan and Elaine Shuffle. Bless them continually, we pray, with your presence. We need role models in your church for the strength of your will. This we ask in your name, and now stand to pray your prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
give thanks to the Lord for he is good. O oh God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our final song.
We first of all thank the musicians and the choirs for beautifying our service, Reformation service today. The stewardship emphasis relevant Reformation will continue. We'll also do that Thursday evenings after the service. Your bulletin contains all kinds of information about the celebration, Reformation celebration this afternoon. Starts at 2 p.m. Look at the details in your bulletin. The men's Bible study group, this is not in your bulletin, on Saturday at the Sand Lake Quick Trip. Next Saturday we'll begin a new topic, witnessing to Mormons and just witnessing in general. The Choral Fest, which in its first year was at Luther High School, returns for its 50th anniversary. We'll be hosting Wisconsin Lutheran Choir next Sunday. We'll be singing in our service, I think 1030 service. The sacred service is at 2 that afternoon at the La Crosse Center. The Pops concert is on Friday evening at 7. Take a moment now and greet those sitting close to you. <laughs> 